Well, good afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. And once again, we are tracking the tropics. Of course, we do these updates every afternoon during hurricane season because we want you to be prepared. We want you to stay safe. And hopefully these tropical systems will leave us alone and we won't have to worry too much about it. But of course, in case some trouble pops up out there in the Gulf of Mexico or maybe developing in the Caribbean, in the Atlantic, we'll let you know. As far as right now, we are not dealing with any tropical troubles, but of course, last week, that was not the case. We did have Alberto develop and become our first tropical storm of the season, and we got some impacts from Alberto. Even though it stayed about 500 miles to our south, we still got quite a bit of coastal flooding, especially around Galveston, Surfside Beach, other coastal communities in southeast Texas. And we also got some gusty wind. 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts were felt for much of our coastal communities and even farther inland. So we didn't get a ton of rain in our northern spots, but of course down around the coast from Alberto, four, five, six inches of rain for some of our coastal areas. So we did get some impacts and thankfully it wasn't any worse, but now we're waiting to see if we're going to get barrel to develop over the next two to seven days. There's a low chance we are monitoring a tropical wave now in the Eastern Caribbean. So this is the official list of storm names as we go through this season, which by the way, goes all the way through the end of November. So things may be fairly quiet now, but we've got to get through several more months. So we go from Alberto all the way down to William. Hopefully we won't have to use many of those names, but it looks like it will likely be a fairly busy hurricane season. So just don't panic, be prepared, be ready, just in case things start to get a little turbulent with the tropics. Here are the things to know at this point. We are tracking one tropical wave in the Eastern Caribbean. Slow development is possible as it moves towards the Western Caribbean over the next two to three days. I think especially by Friday, we will have a shot for this system to maybe turn into a tropical depression and potentially a tropical storm. So there is a low chance of a tropical system in the southern Gulf early next week because we're expecting it to push over the Yucatan Peninsula and into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, likely by this weekend. So if this system develops, it likely will stay south of our area, of course, southeast Texas. But of course, things can always change and we look at all of the latest model updates. But right now it looks like we would not get a direct hit but of course keep checking back in case things start to change so where is this tropical wave well it is this massive showers and storms in the eastern caribbean north of south america and it is pushing fairly quickly to the west around 20 to 25 miles per hour so it is going to continue its journey across the caribbean over the next two to three days and the national hurricane center basically saying there's a better chance for this to develop once it reaches the western caribbean sea the atmospheric conditions will be slightly more favorable. But even there, there's still not a high chance. So here is that tropical wave, that disturbance in the Eastern Caribbean. Only a low 10% chance for development over the next 48 hours or the next two days. And even looking out through the next week, there's only a low 20% chance of development. One thing that may slow it down, well, we do have some Saharan dust trying to sweep its way into parts of the Caribbean and Gulf, already into the Atlantic. So that may slow it down a little bit, but overall water temps out there are still fairly warm in the 80s. So we will have to wait and see and watch closely to see what this thing does. But right now you can see the area where there could be some possible development, and that would be the Northwestern Caribbean Sea, the Yucatan Peninsula, and into the Southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Mexico or the Bay of Campeche. So at this point, we will watch this thing closely, but it looks like if we do get a tropical depression or tropical storm to develop this weekend or early next week, it likely stays to our south. We've got high pressure pretty strong over our area, so that likely would steer it into Mexico once again, but it could bump up our rain chances a bit and we could get a little bit of that tropical moisture. So what does our long range model say? Where well, this is a look at our GFS model, our Gulf future cast, and basically not showing a lot of organization with this system through Wednesday and Thursday. But as we get into Friday and Saturday, you'll notice that disturbance making it all the way over to the Yucatan Peninsula and trying to get a little bit more organized, still not looking fairly impressive, but 
we are going to monitor that closely as we push on into the weekend Sunday it looks like it could be pushing into the southwestern Gulf and that is really when we're going to have to monitor things closely because like I said even if it does go into Mexico and stays to our south we could once again have those elevated tides the higher rip current risk and we could have some slightly higher rain chances building into our area for early next week so certainly something to monitor right now we're not panicking about it. it doesn't look like there's a high chance for development but keep it here and of course we will keep you updated as far as rainfall from this our long range model not showing much rain for Houston at all in fact between now and Monday likely less than an inch for the majority of the area really the heavy rain threat appears to be down across parts of Mexico central and eastern Mexico if this system were to make landfall if it develops, that's likely where it would be, and it would dump a lot of heavy rain in a similar area that Tropical Storm Alberto hit. So not really looking like a big time heavy rain potential for us. So that is certainly some good news. Of course, we are gonna to continue to monitor it, but for now, we are not worried about any system slamming into the Houston area, at least over the next few days. But of course, we are still in the first month of a very long hurricane season. Hurricane season started at the beginning of June and runs all the way through the end of November. And this is usually the time of hurricane season where things are not that busy, not that active at all. It's usually August and especially September and even into October where things really start to ramp up and get pretty busy. And that is when we will likely start to see a lot more action. But for now, we're keeping things on the very quiet side for now, but we will watch the Gulf of Mexico late this weekend, early next week to see if we do have that system developing. Only a 10 to 20% chance of that happening. So that's your tropical update. Now let's talk about what we're dealing with here at home. A ton of heat. In fact, we've got numerous heat alerts across parts of Texas. In fact, spanning across several states, across the Mississippi River Valley, up into parts of the Midwest, several areas under heat advisories including right here in Houston. And we've even got excessive heat warnings stretching over towards Arkansas, parts of Mississippi and Northeast Louisiana. So bottom line, we've got an upper level ridge aiding in those super hot temperatures, that ridge sitting over towards El Paso, east of Phoenix, and it is cranking in that hot air. So it's keeping that storm track mainly to our north. So we're not expecting any big chance for strong to severe storms, but it is pulling in a lot of heat. So hot and humid sizzling out there, not just for the rest of today, but for the next several days. In fact, we just got an update from the National Weather Service a few minutes ago, and they have decided to extend the heat advisory. It was supposed to end at 8 p.m. this evening. It has now been extended until 8 p.m. Wednesday. It doesn't include our coastal communities, but if you are farther inland, Houston, Sugarland, Katy, Cypress, the Woodlands, Huntsville, you are now under this extended heat advisory all the way until 8 p.m. tomorrow. So what does that mean? That means the feels like temp or those heat index values when you add in that humidity with the actual air temperature will likely be around 108 to 112 and maybe even a few degrees higher for some of you. Right now, actual temps close to triple digits in Huntsville, 97 degrees for you, 93 out at Bush Airport, 92 in Pearland, 91 in Sugarland, and close to 90 if you are planning some beach time in Galveston. You are baking there as well. Notice there's not much at all showing up on our Fox Red radar. Pretty clean sweep. There's a slim 10 to 20 percent chance for an isolated shower or storm for this evening. However, there's going to be a ton of heat and very little rain. So don't count on the rain to cool things off because there's just not going to be that much to go around. So here's where the problem is right now. Heat index values basically ranging from about 100 to around 100. 11 for most spots at this point. So we definitely have dangerous heat indices in the area that feels like temp for Houston around 104 at this point, but 109 the feels like temp for you in Laporte. And I've discovered a heat index of 113 on this map. It is certainly dangerous heat you are dealing with in Katy at this point. So that is definitely in that danger zone. So just make sure that you are taking all of your 
heat precautions very seriously because you want to stay safe. Of course, if you're out in the sun, you need the sunscreen. You need to be staying hydrated, drink water frequently. Try to find areas in the shade. If you have to be outside, try to take breaks indoors with the AC and try to wear that light colored clothing and just try to take it easy. Try not to do too much work during the hottest part of the day, which typically is during the afternoon hours. All right, let's check out your beach forecast because things have improved here across Galveston. No longer do we have those red flags flying. That means high danger, high rip current risks. So we don't have that. We do have a yellow flag, which basically means that conditions are more normal with the water. We've got a slight chop waves of around two to four feet. So that means you need to swim with caution, but overall that rip current risk a little bit lower, but still make sure to try to swim near a lifeguard. And if you're not a strong swimmer, just be extra careful if you're going to get in the water. So we do have those temperatures that will be close to 90 all the way through 8 p.m. Middle 80s by 10, partly sunny. If you are heading towards Galveston, not much rain. Rain chances only around 10%. So here is the setup for the next few days and the next several days. Dangerous heat taking shape across much of the southwestern U.S., central U.S., into much of Texas. We've got that big ridge building across New Mexico, and that will mean a lot of heat, not record heat, but we are going to have those temperatures close to 100 and the heat index values, of course, in that danger zone, likely right around heat advisory criteria around 108 for the next couple of days. And then we may see those heat index values slide just under heat advisory criteria by Saturday and Sunday. So we will be likely dealing with another heat advisory for tomorrow, but for now, we are going to have that potential for that dangerous heat to continue likely for days to come. So we are going to have a very slim chance for a little bit of rain as we check out our future cast one or two showers and storms popping up as we go through the evening hours. Notice by 11 o'clock, whatever develops with that precip kind of falling apart and coming to an end. Not expecting much rain for tomorrow morning, but by tomorrow afternoon, still once again, a slight chance for one or two showers and storms developing over the area, but there's just not going to be a lot of rain. So basically the next five days, rain chances around 20 to 30%, pretty low shot for rain. So don't count on much heat relief in the form of precipitation. So you'll have to do something else to keep cool and stay comfortable out there. Weather where you live for tomorrow, Pasadena, 88 degrees around nine. So even if you go for that jog in the morning, it's still not gonna be that comfortable. 93 by the afternoon. How about 95 for that high tomorrow in Tomball? Of course, that heat index will be closer to 108 to 110. Katie, it's going to be the same story for you. A steamy start and a sizzling finish. 95 degrees around 4 to 5 p.m. with partly cloudy skies. So this is typical summer heat, but it is still dangerous heat. So try to remember these things. Make sure to drink plenty of water. Try to avoid alcoholic beverages that can act to dehydrate you. And you also want to try to drink beverages with electrolytes. They can help protect you against heat stress. Also, as I've been mentioning, try to take breaks in the AC. If you have to be outside, take breaks under a big tree in that shade. Wearing light colored clothing could help you out a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty uncomfortable out there. And most importantly, look before you lock. You always want to look in your car, check the front seat, check the back seat multiple times before you lock that door and step away. Make sure you're not leaving your kids or your pets in that vehicle. Usually the car heats up the most in the first 10 minutes that you leave it abandoned. So make sure that you are checking for your kids and for your pets so that we don't have any of those incidents where someone is left in that hot car. All right, temperature outlook for the first week of July showing a ton of heat, not just for Houston, but for much of the state. So get ready, the heat is on. Temperature is likely above average for the next several days. Here is a look at our precip outlook though for July 1st through 5th showing the precip around average or slightly below average. So we're not expecting much rain. For the longest, we were in that above average precipitation category, but it looks like we're starting to dry things out and heat things up, which of course is typical for the beginning of July in Southeast Texas. So that will do it for your weather update. Tropics fairly quiet, just that one system that we're monitoring, low chance of it making it to the Gulf this weekend. And of course, the big story will be the heat.
stay safe in that heat. That heat advisory has been extended for Houston all the way through Wednesday evening. Have a great rest of your day. Once again, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade.